Please welcome President David W. Pershing. Welcome to all of you who are students. We are thrilled that you're here. You've made a great choice to come to a major university in the world. Let me introduce my, the lovely lady on my right. This is my wife, Dr. Sandy Pershing, who is both a professor here in the Department of Political Science in the MPA program, and also our Assistant Vice President for Engagement. And because I'm so nervous up here, she's gonna help me do this today. <laughs> and and she, so we we'll welcome her. <laughs> Sandy and I both want to welcome you to the University of Utah. And we, we hope that you'll find this to be a friendly place. Students, if you see one of us walking across the campus, you do not look the other way, right? You look at us and say, hi, Dave, hi, Sandy. If you look at me and wonder if, now is that really the president? Look at my feet. I will have on cowboy boots if it's the real me. <laughs> so welcome to the University of Utah. Indeed, and, and this is such an exciting journey. I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. I remember myself a very long time ago before most of you were born being a freshman on this very campus. And my mom uh, dropping me off in front of Van Cott Hall, which is now a parking lot. Um, <laughs> and I was a first generation college student as well. In fact, so is Dave. And my mom didn't know what to do and I didn't know what to do. And um, somehow I figured it out and, and here I am back uh, as a faculty member, but I can't stress enough the importance of the support from your parents. You heard that from Larry, which is really um, such a wonderful message. It's amazing of you all to be here. I'd love for students to just lean over, give a hug, say thanks um, to your parents, just real quick, would you? <laughs> Who's nervous? Anybody nervous? I'm nervous, I'm up here talking in front of you guys. Nervous? Nobody? Uh, there's a couple. Who's excited? I'm excited to be here with you too. Excellent. Well, it's wonderful that you're here and the fact that your parents are here with you today says so much about uh, the support system that you already have and the fact that so many of you raised your hands and said how excited you were tells us that you all already have something in common, right? You've been personally uh, chosen to be here among thousands of applications. Yours were chosen because you are ready. You're ready for the kinds of intellectual challenges that, that this institution will present. You're ready to be creative doers, and we're so proud to be part of that process with you. So we have 32,000 students. Dave and I have 32,003 children. <laughs> Um, 15,000 employees, that equals one community, it's, and it's one community that's made up of people who come from everywhere, all different places, states, cities, towns, rural, urban, different countries, different family backgrounds, different ethnicities and cultures, and that's what makes this place really amazing. Uh, the diversity that you all bring to our community makes us stronger, and we're so happy to get to know all of you and, and um, to be made stronger by your presence. Now. You may not know all of the people that are U of U alums and that are very proud members of our community, the community that you've just joined, and hopefully in four, well, maybe five years, you will be graduating from. But I thought I should just say a, a word about that, from President Monson to former Governor Orlean Walker, from Pastor Franz Davis to Judge Andy Valdez, across this community are Utes, proud graduates of our community. At the national level, these are names that you may know. Uh, Bill Marriott, you may have seen a few Marriott hotels around, is one of our graduates, as is John Warnock, the, the president and co-founder of Adobe, and also the, the most fun one, perhaps, is Ed Capnell, who currently is president of Pixar, you know, as in Toy Story, and also president of Disney Animation. So you are joining a very interesting group of individuals who have been before you, setting, sitting in this very hall, in fact, at various times in their career. Now, one of the things, and this graph's a little hard to see, but you have made a wise financial decision, and I hope that your parents feel the same way. This is a graph of how much you're likely to make, and um, it's, it's not too easy to see, but it, right now you're here. Uh, you just graduated from high school, so this is you, and that turns out to be about, on average, you would make about $30,000 a year. However, 
If you just stay with us and graduate from the University of Utah, you jump way up here. Much nicer, much easier to buy the Porsche. <laughs> this is where you want to go. And as a commercial for the future, I have to encourage you to think about professional degrees. Much easier to buy the great big house. So you've made a wise financial decision by coming to the University of Utah. Another thing that I want to say just a word about is all of the world-class faculty we have here. From our Nobel Prize winner, Mario Kopecki, to many faculty who are members of the National Academy of Science and Engineering and Medicine, to our fine, fine arts faculty. And in fact, many of them are here today. So I want to give a shout out to all of the people who are on our staff and faculty that are here today to help us. So thank you so much for being part of this day for us as well. But we want you to understand that there are people here that will help you. You may have a problem sometime during your career. And there are wonderful stars like Martha Wright here on the front row who probably have seen whatever it is that your problem is. So don't wait. Ask. It's much better to let us know you're having some kind of a little challenge before it becomes a huge challenge. Because if it becomes a huge challenge, it gets to me, and then I don't know how to solve it. So ask the people. Ask lots of counselors, lots of counselors and people that you can ask. So don't be afraid to reach out and let somebody help you. This is one of my favorite show pieces. This was created by one of our undergraduate students. So this is obviously a modern new game. And one of the things I love that's different than when I played this game is the pinball. If it decides it doesn't want to be a ball, it can get up and run very different than what I remember in the old pinball machine. But this literally was created by one of our undergrad students who is part of the EAE gaming program. And it's just a lot of fun to show, I think. So this is the kind of thing undergraduates do at the University of Utah. is a really big place and there are more than 300 buildings. I'm pretty sure I haven't even been in half of them and I've been here for a long time. It can be overwhelming at first. It can be overwhelming a year from now. Um, make sure that if you're feeling lost uh, geographically, stop and ask somebody. There's going to be someone around you that has been to that building before and who's willing to help. I also would say if you're feeling lost in your classes, faculty are real people. They go to the grocery store, they do their laundry, um, they have dogs that they walk, and they're just like all of us. And so don't be afraid to go and let them know that you need some help. They care about your success as much as we do. I wanted to share uh, a story with you about my freshman year here, um, again, a long time ago, but I had a professor named J.D. Williams in the, in the political science department who has since passed away. Uh, but I was in a room maybe half the size of this, 250 students in the classroom, Political Science 101 at the time. Um, and I went home for fall break and I got in a car accident. I was hit by a drunk driver and I missed a couple of days of class when I got back to campus after fall break. There was no email then, there were no cell phones then. Um, there was a telephone and, and I feel a little guilty about the fact that I didn't pick it up because I thought there are 250 people in the class. He doesn't know me, he doesn't know if I'm gone. It'll be fine, I'll get some notes from one of the other students and it'll be okay. But I decided on that day that I came back to go meet with him in his office and just let him know what was going on. I had the neck brace on, it was kind of obvious, but he said, I walked through the door, my maiden name was Scheibel, and he said, Miss Scheibel, you've missed two classes. <laughs> Out of 250 people, he knew I had been gone, he knew how many classes I missed, and he knew my name, which was really shocking. Um, he helped me get a plan together to get the notes I needed, to work with other students in the class to be sure that I um, was keeping up. I want to fast forward many, many years. When I arrived back on this campus as a faculty member, I got that very office. I was sitting in the office I visited, visited him in, and I sent him an email. Of course, now I have a new last name. And I said, will you please be a guest speaker in my class? I would love for you to come and talk about the Constitution, because that was his thing. 
And uh, he came to meet with me to talk about that, and he walked through the room and he said, Miss Scheibel, a great man once had this office and a great woman once visited him there. <laughs> so, um, so faculty want to know you, get to know them. You've heard this message a lot today from every single speaker that's come before us. Get involved, find ways to connect, be in the must, do service projects with the Benyon Center, join a club, start a club, get a group of people together, um, and, and make friends outside of the classroom. Be involved in this university beyond your class experiences because it will really enrich the experience that you have here. Now I want to say just a little bit about the facilities. When I became the senior vice president about 14 years ago, it was clear to me that our buildings weren't doing so well. They were getting kind of old. So over the last 14, 15 years, I have worked to rebuild the main campus, and my partner, Laura Svet, has worked to rebuild the Health Sciences campus, and that has come along really well. If you've driven around the campus, those of you who were uh, parents that went to school here, you may notice it looks a little different than it did when you were here, right? Well, we're in the, in the process of continuing to try to change that. Yesterday, we did the groundbreaking for the new Ray and Ty Norda Oral Health Sciences building. That means dentistry, is what that means. We now are going to have a full-on dental program for the students in the state of Utah who want to become dentists. And we did the groundbreaking yesterday. There's a big hole over by the stadium that's going to be the new S.J. Quinney College of Law building. You may have seen that giant hole, and that is under construction as well. The Sorensen Arts and Education building over by the business area is just about to be finished. This, it'll be done about Christmas time, and so if any of you are interested in becoming teachers, that's your building, and it's going to be brand new. We have many other new buildings on the campus, but the one that's probably the most interesting to the students is this one. <laughs> yes, right? Yeah, the, the new George S. Eccles Student Life Center. This is going to be amazing. And I'm convinced, based on the experience of our older daughter, that this is important to most students in some way or other. The very top is going to be an indoor track where you will be able to run around and look outside at the amazing views we have here in Utah of the mountains. This is a picture that shows the many gymnasiums, the fireplace that will be in the sort of living room area of the center, and there's a, a huge uh, area that has got all kinds of machines, which, most of which I would be afraid to go near for fear they'd break my arm, but that you all understand. So that's going to be really great. The other thing that we are very excited about is we have a new 50-meter indoor pool that is also going to have a play area. I don't know what that means, but that's what they call it. <laughs> and last, but surely not least, this is not actually a picture of the lobby, or at least that's not what's important about this picture. This is a picture of, yes, what must every Student Life Center have? A red rock indoor climbing wall. <laughs> so this is going to be amazing. Thanks to the Eccles Foundation and many other donors, we're really excited about having this. Now on a little more fundamental or more academic uh, area, when I stood on this stage in my inaugural address, I promised the, cl the incoming class of last year that we were going to work to offer every one of them the, uh, an exceptional opportunity of some kind. This is what we call the presidential promise. The idea that I don't want you to just go to class. Do go to class, please. But I don't want you to just do that. We want you to get involved in something academic as well. And now I'm going to let Sandy talk about all the different kinds of things we have in this area because she runs engagement. There are so many opportunities to get involved on campus, and, and I can only scratch the surface. You've heard about some of them already. But obviously research, innovation, getting involved in uh, the work that is going on in the various labs and classrooms on this campus is a really wonderful way to connect. Uh, we have a new campus opening soon in South Korea. Perhaps you choose to study there for a little while. Uh, Rio Mesa, we have um, some facilities down there doing work uh, in and around ecology, and, and it's a beautiful space. Dave and I went there on our great red road trip last summer, and, and it's a really wonderful place to explore. Uh, also, the Honors College, Honors Courses, Honors Think Tanks. It's a really amazing place to connect to lots of like-minded individuals. 
We have a new space in Lakeview, Montana. It's a renovated ghost town. It's an environmental humanities center. Perhaps some of you will find yourselves exploring um, reconstructed old beautiful buildings in this ghost town. It's quite amazing. Or you might find yourself on a stage doing a variety of, of projects within the arts. Uh, there are so many ways for you to get involved and to get engaged. And you can always come talk to me. I'm in the Office of Engagement. I'm in 136 Sill Center. Please come and connect. You can also go online to, to the Muse project, with it, which is my U signature experience. You can search and find out the various ways based on your interests, the various ways for you uh, to connect to this campus, or just come see me and talk to me and I can help you as well. Um, we have some pipeline and, and mentoring programs we can connect you to. We can get you to connected to the Block U program. There are just so many ways that you can find community here in this very big place. And please, you know, look for one of us walking around and, and let us help you um, make those kinds of connections. I want to introduce you to four students who are much like yourselves, who uh, sat where you're sitting uh, nearly a year ago and, and decided on how their paths were going to look on this campus. They got engaged, they got connected, and here's what they had to say. It really, I think, makes the experience for me. Drumline has been the big part because I get to come out here march on the field in front of thousands of fans. There's opportunities everywhere if you're willing to ask and look for them. So I do think this is a place that you can do just about anything that you imagine. Global Health Scholars helped me realize, hey, I, I can do math and I can help people and I can work with health and I can do all of these things in a really interdisciplinary way. With my research, I hope to just further our understanding of how nanoparticles can be used in a biological context so that we can further not just cancer research, but research in general. Staying involved outside of the classroom environment helps you uh, bond with your peers, with your professors. It actually helps you in classes as well. It's made me work harder in the classroom. I uh, got good grades my first year of college and then it transferred over to the second year. I hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, the U's really big, how do you find your way there? And it is big, but that's the best part. Because it's big enough that there's a lot of opportunities, there's so much to do and so much to find if you just look. Go Utes! Okay, well we're the only thing standing between you and food, so we're going to finish. <laughs> but we hope that you will take away two or three key messages from what we've said today. If you know what you want to be, I went into Purdue knowing I wanted to be a chemical engineer. That was such an exciting field, right? I mean, I can't, you all can't imagine being anything but chemical engineers, right? So, and, and I just went straight at that. But I know that that's not typical, actually. I'm sort of aberrational in that way. Many of you probably don't know exactly what you want to do here. That's okay. That's totally cool. We have more than 100 majors. So try something out. See if it's where you are. But what I would say to you is find your passion. Whatever you do, figure out what lights you up. That's what we want you to study at the University of Utah. And one final plug I want to make is think about taking 15 hours credits. Maybe you don't want to do that the first semester. But overall, we want you to think about taking 15 credits per semester because it takes 120 credit hours to um, graduate from the University of Utah. And if you do the math, if you only take 12 every semester, you don't get out in four years. So we want to encourage you to think about 15. Now, I know many of you are working your way through, and that may not work. But for those of you who can, do think about taking 15. And you'll hear more about that as we go through the year, because we're beginning to talk more about that. Anyway, thank you so much for being with us. What would you like to close by saying, darling? Uh, just, I so glad to be with you all today and hope we get to meet you out front. Yes, we will be out front. Enjoy your day. We're glad you're at the University of Utah. Thank you.